Hey everybody, welcome back to another uh, another edition of uh, Garage uh, Scale Studio Modelers. Um, here, I'm Dave Forrest and I'm here with my good friend Harvey Lope. And today, uh, we're going to actually do some airbrush work and I'm going to do some camo on the uh, 251 uh, Stuka Zufus that we talked about a couple of episodes back. With, uh, this is the Dragon Kit that I was complaining horribly about. Right. <laughs> yes. Still doing some green, I see. No. Are you on the red? Are you the yeah, red I was clean, I'm just cleaning this out. Now, is that red, red camo, is that the same as the primer red brown? No. Different. Different. Yeah, the primer red brown's a lot more red. Just uh, blow this back. Again, you're going to be spraying out a color through there, so you don't have to do Yeah, yeah. You don't have to clean your airbrush. Just keep spraying until the green's all gone. You got it. Okay. Yeah. So she's more or less green free. So let's get some work going on the red brown. Going on the red brown. Okay. So we'll get a few. Be careful. So again, just a few drops. Actually, you take the cap off now. I can smell it. Yeah, this this stinks. No, I, I don't know how if the readers uh, do this, but do you guys use a um, air purifier or anything like that when you? You know, in the areas where you spray, I, I, I don't what? yet. No, I don't. I just have a um, yeah. open window. Well, an open window, and I have the the paint with the, the paint pencil, right, right. right? So I might, get, I might get an air. I've been doing three D resin printing, and that stuff smells. So I might get. An oh, air. doesn't? I might get an air purifier. Yeah, we'll, we'll maybe do an issue for uh, sure. Episode yeah. on three D. Yeah, printing. I'm intensely curious on that. Mm -hmm. So let's put this this out of. And I guess our focus on 3D printing for some future episode will be about uh, military modeling as opposed to the, the figures, which are quite well covered. So we'll think about that. I've got to learn how to paint figures. <laughs> take, it's always a new take, challenge. Take Steve up on his offer. Yeah. Well, you know, while we're talking about that, uh, I don't know about you, Dave, but I, I like to, to dibble in ships and aircraft. I, th I think it just gives you an appreciation and increases your skills overall as a modeler. Agreed. I'm even working on a, on a car. I'm sorry guys, we don't do a lot of cars on this channel, but maybe that'll change because I'm working on a, a couple of F1 cars for some clients and uh, the, uh, the gentleman is interested in, in uh, Ayrton Senna's car, so maybe I'll do something on cars, but I am primarily a military subject matter affectionate. Now I'm just going to add a little bit more. More thinner? More thinner. Just because for whatever reason, out of the bottle, the red's a little bit thicker than the green. Be curious in the comments if you guys, in where you are from, whether you have access to Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. Because I know uh, we're in Canada and we're blessed to be able to have access to a lot of these products from uh, from Asia. But I know sometimes in the in other countries they're a little bit yeah, harder. Yeah, it can be a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. We're pretty good. But you can, uh, yeah, if you can get the Tamiya, I mean, I guess it's the same, coming from the same place, yeah. but the Tamiya stuff is good. Tamiya stuff's good. Yep. The yellow cap is just the regular thinner, orange cap is with the retarder. Yeah, the retarder makes a big difference. Yeah. There's a blue cap now. Is that the enamel thinner? I forget. There's a blue cap Tamiya thinner. I think it's their enamel. I can't remember. And you're kind of thinning it to the consistency of low fat milk. Low fat milk. Yeah. Do I drink low fat milk? I don't know what I drink. Do you drink any milk? I do. I drink the uh, lowest fat milk you can get. Mm -hmm. All Carol buys. But after a while, you get it's funny you're getting you get used to stuff. Like I, I can't drink. Oh, is that right? Different, higher fat. Con there we go. Oops. There we go. Oh, that's good. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is just go back over and again follow the the pattern here. It's much the same way we did with the green, but now we're doing it with the red. So I'm going to start. Now while while you're doing that, um, I do find with older paints. This is my little tip for you. I know you're mixing it right in the cup, but older paints I tend to strain them through uh, pantyhose uh, just to get all the. Old chunks out because sometimes it does happen. Stir your paint, uh, but then I, I filter it through, especially the older paints, right? But that, it kind of wastes the paint if, if you've got, a, you know, if you're just doing a little bit of work, but 
Just be careful if you've got an older tin of Tamiya or AK, they do kind of settle. Yeah, that's true enough. And it just takes a few, a few bits to yeah. really gunk up the airbrush. Yep, yeah. and all of a sudden you got a splatter and that's the whip the model at the wall. No, I'm just kidding. You can always fix things. Yeah, you can. Now, in real life, was there there was no order in which they applied these because right, Dave? Like, did they care whether the red brown was first or the green? I don't think no. so. I think it's whatever the cruise, whatever was convenient yeah. for the crews at the time. That's really looking sharp. I noticed that you go for a nice contrast in colors because the the weathering will tone them. Correct. Correct. Mm. Yeah. So don't be uh, too afraid, uh, viewers, to over uh, accentuate the model in terms of the, the vibrancy of your colors because those will be toned down when you weather. Got it. Exactly right. So we'll do another swatch here. That's really fast. Well, that's easy. Very relaxing, right? Very. Until you get splatter effect, until you get wheels that don't align, then is it then is it relaxing, David? Is it? Tell me. No, that's not relaxing. That's not relaxing. But this is. I find this very relaxing. It's looking great. Nice tight finish. It's looking German. Yeah, it definitely. It does, does have, look German. It yeah. definitely does have that German look and feel to it. Um, yeah, so maybe we'll just. Continue building up. That's a nice. Uh, that's a, what you mentioned it early in the video, but what it's the AK red brown whatever. It is. Yeah, it's the what is it the zero six seven. Mm. There's a there's a bunch of like they have different color like a ah, one that's more brown. Right. This is kind of a nice mix between the brown and the red, and then they have like a or one that's very red, which is really I think meant to be their the red primer, which is which is a nice color. You know those colors look. These could also be used in Japanese vehicles for sure. I'm looking at that. That green that's definitely could be used on a Chiha, the red brown, could be used in some earlier Japanese vehicles in the 30s. You don't always have to use the German color for German vehicles. I got a few more drops of thinner because we're getting a little bit of overspray. interested in from the viewers if you were if you are all doing these multi-cam vehicles how how long does it take you to do a whole vehicle all right these generally are quicker compared to some of the Italian colors I'm proposing to be starting a uh, Italian AB 40 armored car and this thing's got a, got a camo pattern like Da Vinci, it's like so complex. So. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, I don't know what the Italians love the the gaudiness of their of their camouflage patterns. There we go. Now we're back on track. What'd you do? Just add more finish? Yeah, I just like I was starting to see some splatter? Some a little bit of splatter and mm -hmm. overspray and it's just mm -hmm. because the low air pressure when the paint's too thick. Yes, right. 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 There you go. So just the you know, just a quick adjustment and then you're back on track. It's also got good lighting here so you can see what you're doing. Yeah. We've got these, uh, what are they called, LED lamps in, in the garage here. I picked mine up at uh, Costco and they're, they're like three LED bulbs that you screw into the uh, into your socket. They've got an extension but they're incredibly bright. So I would suggest you guys do that. I mean, I know that some people spray with a magnifier but I love these these large LED lamps that you, that you can get at the hardware store. And you can adjust the uh, brightness on them by flipping the switch quickly back and forth. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They are. They are they're very... And it actually warms the room in the winter. Because we're, we're in a garage right now in the deep winter, but he's got heating in here, but they certainly help. Thank goodness we have heating in here. Yeah. Well, we're Canadians, right? Well, we are. But we still like to keep warm. Yeah. We're not in Southern California. So again, just working, you know, kind of generally following the, the instructions. Following, but not following, I guess. 
That doesn't look anything like the instructions here, David. What are you doing? Yeah, I'll give you a little tiny bit. That's ridiculous. That's looking great. Oh, it's good now. Now, your choice of not doing the wheels is purely because some of them were not camouflaged, correct? Correct. But you could. Oh, yeah, you could, sure. Some of them were. You know, so you could, it just for, for added interest, I suppose you could do one or two wheels, Kevin, and leave the rest for just interest. Yeah, maybe. Right? Yeah. Good thought. Just like, right? you did, just like having a different colored crate, yeah. right? Because I find if you do that, like I, I think I might have said this in the earlier video, the longer you have the viewer's eye on a model, I think the more successful you are in your model, because it means that it's telling the story. So it's telling multiple stories. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And that's what you want to do with your model. You want to add a little detail, a little helmet, a little this, a little that. It's telling the story. That's Correct. That's really looking sharp. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Now, did you do those tracks? Are those tracks painted yet? Are they? Uh, they're just primed and oh, just have okay. some of the overspray. Okay. And did you put the track, did you glue the tracks off first and just paint the tracks? Everything on. Yeah. Them? Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm doing, I find I'm doing that more and more now. Yeah? Yeah. I still don't do that. I do, the, but it is time consuming. You do the do the wheels and put the tracks on. It is time. Consuming. Sometimes you have to, right? Like because, or you're painting everything in sub assemblies. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned here as I'll be back to my share. And I know we kind of go back and forth on this channel, so that's the way we are. But we always uh, finish what we start, so I'll be uh, finishing. Eventually. The, yeah, eventually. Eventually, yes, we get there. Sheridan. Maybe that one I'll do a modulation exercise on it. We'll try to do it within the, the timing of the episode. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it'll be a nice subject. I'm looking forward to seeing how that turns out, right? Well, I'm not, I'm not a, a Vietnam vehicle um, expert by any means, but we'll see when we get there. Not bad. Yeah, getting there. It's starting to look like a... It's, it actually looks excellent. Uh, so let's... And notice you're, you're so fine spraying that you don't even have to mask off the inside of the vehicle, which would... No. That's just a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're controlling it. Yeah. Years, so. Yeah. Yeah, that airbrush is three to five millimeters from the surface. Yeah, five millimeters. Tight. tight. Now, now in contrast, um, I, I don't know whether we can get this on the video, but I'm working on a one two hundred Yamato from Fine Steel Modeler, um, and uh, the table's not big enough for that. No, right? the garage no. isn't big enough for that. And I'm using a for, to paint the overall gray. It's like a point five nozzle. It's, it's completely different airbrush, and you're not in that close. You're using a very, very wide nozzle. I'm sure that, that, you should try and get it on if we can. Yeah, yeah, we'll. Uh, if that works, maybe. We could try we'll it, yeah. It's almost done. It's been a four month journey, and, you know, I want to keep the integrity of, of, of the model for the purposes of the article, but yes, perhaps we could show a teaser of it. The fine school said that would be fine, so we could perhaps do that when it's finished. Show you what it looks like before the article comes out, which hopefully will be early 2023. Oh, I'd love to see that. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Hmm. Now, now again, your your sequence of colors is green, then then the red brown. You could easily flip it the other way around, and it just gives a variation in in your sure, pattern. Sure it'll, look, it it'll look different, but that's up to you, right? Exactly. It's all how you want to kind of approach it. I can see the uh, the love of German Army. You've got that. You've got all that variation. Yeah, it is. Uh, it does. That is starting to come together. And again, it looks it looks pretty stark at this. Uh, it looks good, but it looks, it looks pretty great. stark. Yeah, but, but, it, but you know, you know, there'll be filters and weathering and streaking. And so, Robert, how long have we been filming now? About about an hour. 
42 minutes. 42 minutes. We're going to have to break this episode down, but it's live, and uh, he's been at it for 42 minutes. Has it been 42 minutes already? Yes. Yes. Wow. And he's already, so yeah, 42 minutes, you're, even like with our minutes. banter, you're, you're, what, three quarters of the way through? Yeah. Almost, almost, yeah. almost done, just to back. So you can see how you can actually do this in one night's sitting easily. Of course, when I do this, I play videos. I watch YouTube, I watch all sorts of modeling videos, so... That's the oh, that's looking great. Yeah, just, and this, I mean, this will get hidden by one of the crates, but... Yeah. We'll know it's there. You could leave a crate off, could you not? Would that be accurate? Yeah, you could. Yeah. But it would, uh... It might muck with the lines of the vehicle. For a yeah. Bit, right? Mm -hmm. Don't muck with the lines of the model. I know some aircraft modelers don't like the uh, open open panels on engines because it ruins the lines of the aircraft. Well, it depends what you're. Yeah. Depends what you're up for, right? So just building up the color very slightly, very controlled. After the kit, when did this kit release? Do you remember? Probably like. No, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there's. Years, I mean, 15 it, years, maybe? At least, well, or even longer. Mm -hmm. Like, I think the bones of this go back some time, but they've added, they've made a lot of subsequent releases and improved some of the parts. And it's still newer than the Tamiya kit. Uh, or roughly the same. I know the FD yeah, clip's you, recent. Yeah, it probably is. You're probably right. Yeah, the FD yeah. clip's fairly recent. I have to go into scale mates to check yeah. the image of it. I think there's still a, a bit of an interest in taking the old kit and making it look really, really good. Really nice. Yes, there is. For sure. I think my first, one of my first models was a 135th Hanomag, but I think it was a re -E. I can't remember. It was like, I was in grade six at school. When they allowed when they allowed kids to bring uh, toxic paints to school, we, we grade six teacher used to allow us to have build models during class as a hobby thing. I don't think they do that. That anymore. is awesome. That right? They don't do that anymore. I don't think I don't, the kids I don't, are yeah, I don't know, but... interested. But yeah, we all we all brought our paints, and there was no airbrushing back then. But we built our mind and had a mag, and I did a American half track. Those were the days. Uh, simpler times. Simpler times, yeah. So here I'm just following... Right, you're, you're following the lines of the other color, you're yeah. overlapping, you're doing whatever you want to do. Yeah. See, this is your artistic guy coming out, right? I mean, where the patterns go, that's really looking sharp. Yeah, it's getting there. Uh, it's almost, it almost takes longer to do the second color because you're then you have to kind of worry about the first color. Right. Whereas yeah. the first oh. color, it's you a just, clean palette. You just kind of go in. All right. So I, the one thing yeah. I've noticed. You mean you don't want to you want to punch up your colors? You don't want to. Well, you just have to be a little bit more um, more attentive. Mm. And again, there's nothing to say that you can't go back and adjust and play and correct them. Now you guys note that we're kind of doing this model as the camera roll. We're a bit different here, so uh, I know it's, it's kind of taking longer, and, but that's what we do here. We don't, we don't take breaks in the modeling and we just do it in front of the camera. So. If you like our banter, you can watch this. Keep it going while you're modeling. We'll keep you company while you model. 
Let's see if we can get some good soothing music. Oh, yeah. oh music? Yeah. Put, put me to sleep. Well, this is just put it up because I'm just trying to get make sure I get all of the bracket and underneath mm. it. I think this is what two episodes for sure, eh, Robert? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Or edit it down. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Robert's the expert. Oh. Yeah, we're not experts. We're not Robert. experts. Robert's also oh. a phenomenal model builder too, by the way, guys. And you do your your uh, bases too, right, Robert? You're still working on your resume. Oh, yeah, barbecue yes. bases. Barbecue, yeah. barbecue bases. So. We are one and the same. Yep. That's good. Yeah, I think so. Go back to the other side. So maybe we'll do a few here and then we can stop. Yeah. And I can do the rest off camera. Sure. Cause the, yeah, so mm. we've been at it for 45 minutes. I would say you're uh, pretty well three quarters, easily three quarters of the way done. So, so I just got some over, I just got yeah. some splatter there, so we'll, we'll fix that. We'll, we'll stop it here and then we can resume when you're, when you're ready. It gives you an idea of the time frame that Dave's taking on his model. I would probably be about the same, I would think. Now for aircraft though, it's different if I'm doing a a very complex Don't pattern. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> no. Yeah. Especially for, you know, some Luftwaffe 109s or the Italian uh, aircraft. I would take much longer because the patterns are a little bit more complex on, on aircraft, in, arguably, in my opinion. So that's kind of the Finnish side. You mean like in Finland? No, no like in Dunn. Oh, okay. For now. Oh, no, kidding aside, the Finns didn't use these, did they? I don't think so. No, no, no. just the Germans, I think. Maybe some of their allies, maybe Romanians. Right. Maybe. right. Maybe. I think mostly, but, predominantly German. Yeah. Yeah, the Germans were pretty, uh, pretty picky about their... Yeah, what, what of, they gave to their allies. Their more esoteric stuff, yeah. Right. So I'll just continue doing this. Maybe we'll just do a couple... That's fantastic. Can't no, forget yeah. the gun shield, right? So we'll do a That's few... Fantastic. A few on the gun shield. And again, um, you could camouflage the crates if you wanted. Would, would they have been camouflaged or would they have bothered? They didn't want to throw them out, right? They were yeah, just, I'm not, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, gonna... they would have been disposable. Yeah. So I don't, yeah. know, I don't know if they would. And again, the viewers can correct me, but I, I don't think they would have camouflaged them. They would have just tossed them. Yeah. I don't think they would have bothered. That's that's neat. Makes me want to do something German now. All this. Japanese and Italian stuff would do. You're doing the shield, nice. Yeah, I can't forget the shield, right? Can't forget the shield. So that's done. Oops. So oh, they they want the camel behind it. No. And my view of, and my, my knowledge is limited of Hannah Mags, but I, didn't, I don't see any pictures where they would have camouflaged the interior, correct? No. Yeah, none. No, no. Just the Russians do that with the Tiger. <laughs> Just the Russians do that with their Gaz Tiger I'm working on. They got the camel kind of pattern on the inside of the vehicle, which I still don't understand why they would do that. I will continue that on the future episode. You know, speaking of camo and it's funny, I was looking at some, there's some reference shots of some of these in, in museums, and and you'll see like a white interior. No. Oh, oh, no, no, no. right. Yeah, yeah, because they were open to the yeah. elements. Yeah, you'll have, a, you'll have a light colored interior when everything buttons up. Right. But not not one that's exposed like sure. that, because that would stick out, right? E even, even the hatches on the inside would be a pure color, which is my opinion. Yes. Not white. Yeah. Although you do see on occasion, uh, on some black and white photos, Japanese vehicles with 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 a white hatch, I seem to recall. Mm. But generally, they were the exterior color. There you go. Yeah. So I think we'll uh, I think we'll end it there for today. I, I think everybody understands. Yep. Kind of, you just kind of work. I'll just kind of work through yep. the rest of this.
You don't want to hear our banter anyways when yeah. you spray them all. Yeah, thank you. We'll come back to it when it's finished. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll do another episode on having it then, and we'll, I think the next step will be filters and, and weathering. And weathering, yes. Which is the fun part. Which is absolutely mm -hmm. the fun part. Um, yeah, so thanks uh, thanks again for, for yes. hanging out with uh, with Harvey and I. Um, and don't forget, if, uh, if anybody has any questions, they can either put them in the comments mm -hmm. or they can hit us at mm -hmm. uh, garagestudiomodelers at gmail.com. Uh, we do monitor. Harvey does a better job of monitoring the emails than I do, but uh, and, and the comments. But if uh, you need to get a hold of either of us or Robert, uh, feel free to do so. We uh, we, we love yes. to hear from you guys. If you have any we, questions yes. or you want to see something mm -hmm. or have a uh, you know want a clarification on something we talked about in one of the episodes, we're uh, we're we more do. than happy to. And we do read them. I, I we do read them. I read everything. I know Dave, you're busier than I am, but I read. I them. do try and get through them. Yes. Yes. yes, and we don't we don't always respond, but we read them. Yes, we, we do. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Until the next time. Take care, everybody.